Good morning, everyone. In today's lecture, we will continue what we have started in the last lecture. If you recall, in the last lecture, we have derived the magnetic field induced by a finite wire that has a length of 2A. Today, we will extend this and look at an infinite wire. If you recall, the expression for the magnetic field due to a finite wire is given by, by this. Now, if we have an infinite wire, and as you recall, the length for the wire was 2A. In this case, we will look at uh, we will look at the A here to be way greater than the distance x where we where we were evaluating the magnetic field at. So if this is the distance x. If we can call this wire an infinite wire, it's going to be with respect to the distance x where we are evaluating the magnetic field at. So if we assume that A is way greater than x in this case, I can ignore the x squared because A squared would be way greater than x squared. And in this case, this is going to be square root of A squared and then the answer would be A, and then A will cancel with the, with the A. So this one will be ignored with respect to A squared, and this will result into A canceling with the A, and then the magnetic field due to an infinite wire. This is the magnitude would be given by mu naught I divided by two pi R. So in this case, the R is the, radius here, this is R or this is R. All of them are from the center are R. And as you can see, the magnetic field has the same magnitude. And the direction of the magnetic field is always tangential on that field line. Notice based on the right, if you apply the right hand rule where the, the current is defined by the thumb, and then the magnetic field will be defined by the curling fingers. You will notice that the magnetic field at this point to the right of the wire is pointing downward, and this agrees with the right-hand rule. Now look at the magnetic field at the left side of the wire. You will notice that the magnetic field is pointing upward. So based on the direction of that wire, we can distinguish between the points at the left side and the points at the right side of the wire. And as you can see, this is an example where the magnetic field here on the right side of the wire pointing downward, and this agrees with the right-hand rule. And the magnetic, magnetic field at the left side of the wire is pointing upward, and this also agrees with the right-hand rule. Now let's look at this example. Here in this example, we have uh, two parallel long straight wires that have large current flowing out of the page as, as shown here. So in both cases, the current is, a, the current is flowing out of the page. In what direction does the magnetic field point at position P? So if we use the right-hand rule, if you recall from the right-hand right hand rule, if the thumb is pointing out of the page, then definitely at this point, the magnetic field and based on the right-hand rule will be pointing downward, so if, if this is I1, for example, so I will call this one B1. Now, if I am to call this one as I2, then based on the right-hand rule, again, the magnetic field at the point P due to I2 would be pointing upward. So this is upward. However, 
you can notice that the distance here, R1, is greater than the distance here. It is R2, so I have here R1 greater than R2, which means based on the expression of the magnetic field, the magnetic field at B2, which is at the distance closer to I2, would be greater than the current, than the magnetic field due to the current I1. And here we know I1 equals to I2. We just gave them those two numbers so we can distinguish between which field belongs to which current. As we know, the magnetic field is inverse proportional to the distance here to the distance between the point of interest and uh, the wire then in this case b2 would be greater than b1 and in this case the magnetic field would be pointing up now if we look at this example here where we have two wires, wire one and wire two. They're separated by eight centimeters. They carry currents equal in magnitude, but opposite in directions. The magnetic field at point P here is pointing in the negative direction of the Y. So the magnetic field, the net magnetic field is pointing downward. determine the current and wire Y1 and it is direction. So we need to determine the current and this wire and also the, the direction. So we know that the distance here, total distance is eight centimeters and this is two centimeters. So we have here Y X, we have I2 here, we have I1 here, we know the point P here, so the total here is 8 centimeters, the distance here is two centimeters. So what we know is the net magnetic field that is pointing in the negative J hat, which means B net is pointing this way. So we have B net as 1 10 to the power minus 2 Tesla minus J hat pointing this way. We need to calculate I1 as a direction and the magnitude. So looking at this problem, knowing that uh, distance R1, so we have R1 here equals to two centimeters. We have R2 equals to six centimeters. So we know that R2 is a greater than R1 and we know that the magnetic field due to the current I1 should be greater than the magnetic field due to the current I2. Two. So here, R2 is greater than R1. Now, since I1 equal an opposite in sign in I2, then definitely based on the expression, B equals to mu naught I over two pi R, 
then B one magnitude is a greater than B than B two. So in this case, if we try looking at the magnetic field due to I1 being out of the page and I2 being into the page, since they're opposite, so if this is uh, out of the page and this one is into the page, based on the right-hand rule, start with the I1, out of the, the thumb is out of the page, then the magnetic field would be pointing upward. So this would be one. I2 is into the page, then the magnetic field will also be pointing upward. So this would be two. So the net magnetic field would be pointing out, upward, and this is not our case. So if we flip the currents and try looking at I2 being out of the page and I1 being into the page, then based on the right-hand rule, I1 into the page, the thumb, the thumb is into the page, then B1 is downward. I2 out of the page, the thumb is out of the page and I2 is also downward. And this is our case. So in this case, we know that I1 should be into the page. So this is the, the correct case. I1 should be into the page and I2 should be out of the page and B net in this case would be B1 plus, plus B2. So in this case, let's take the magnitude B net equals to B1 mu naught I1 divided by two pi R1, which is six centimeters. Plus mu naught. Also, I'll put this as I1 as well, because they're equal. I'm taking the magnitude, so it doesn't, so the sign doesn't matter divided by two pi times two centimeters. B net as one to the power minus two equals to four pi to the power minus seven. I'll take them outside times I one. Then one over two pi times six to the power minus two plus one over two pi, two to the power minus two. I1 as 1 to the power minus 2 
divided by 4 pi 10 to the power minus 7 times 10.61 then i1 equals 2 Okay, so uh, try this question on your own, and then we can solve it together during our live session. Then now we'll move to another question here, which is basically we have this circuit that is made of uh, those wires. So this wire has been connected to a battery, and the current is going, as you can see, in that circuit. We need to rank the strength of the magnetic field right at those points, Q, P, Q, and R. Those points are uh, above this wire. So this wire is in one plane, and then those points are above those, this wire. We want to rank the, the strength of the magnetic field in descending order. So if we look here at uh, point P, we can see that the magnetic field will be induced based on the right-hand rule. So if this wire and this point is above this wire, based on the right-hand rule, you can see that the magnetic field would be pointing in this direction, right above this wire. However, if you look at the point Q here, we will see that the magnetic field would be almost doubled because I have now two wires underneath this point that both of them have the same current I, which means the magnetic field at the Q would be due to the induced magnetic field from two wires. So the strength of the magnetic field at, at the point to Q here would be would be double in comparison with the P. And this is based on the right-hand rule. If you take your thumb as the direction of the current, then right above that wire, the magnetic field would be pointing downward. Now, if we look at the point R here, I can see that there is a current going from left to the right will generate a magnetic field pointing downward. And then the other current that is making a U-turn and coming back will induce a magnetic field at this point that is pointing upward. So the magnetic field here is almost zero. So if I am to rank in descending order, I will say that Q is the greatest, then comes P, then comes R, which makes E the correct answer to this question. Here we need to calculate the magnetic field due to, we have two parallel wires that are five centimeter apart and carry currents as shown. What is the magnetic field at point P midway between the wires due to the two segments of the wire shown? So we're talking about this segment being this 1.5 millimeter, 1.5 millimeter. So in this case, we need to calculate the magnetic field. So let's draw this. I have this wire. And this wire. So I have here this segment that is 1.5 millimeter point point p 1.5 millimeter and the distance from here to here is eight centimeters the distance from here to here 
as five centimeters. I have a current here that is 12 ampere going this way. I hear, and here I have a current 24 ampere going this way. I need to calculate the magnetic field at the point P midway between the wires due to those two segments. So in this case, if I call this one as I1 and this one as I2, then going to the dB equals to mu naught I divided by four pi dL cross R over R squared. So in this case, we know that dB is a mu naught I divided by four pi dL cross R over R cubed. So let me start with the, if this is my DL1, this is my DL2, and if I take this one as X, and this one as Y, then Z would be pointing upward. So dv1 is 4 pi 10 to the power minus 7 divided by 4 pi. So I have here dl1 is 1.5 10 to the power minus 3, which is millimeter. And this is in the direction of I hat cross. This is R1. And this is R2. R1 over R1 cube. So we know R1 as 8 centimeter, then I have here x1 x1 to be eight squared minus y1, which is, this is y1, which is 2.5 squared. So x1 is
around 12 ampere. Cross R one, which is seven point six four minus two I minus or plus two point five. Minus two. This is minus j divided by eight centimeters cubed. So dB one is. 4 pi is going to cancel. Then I have here I hat cross I hat is going to be 0. So I have here I hat cross minus J hat is going to be minus K hat. So here I have 12 times 1.5, 10 to the power minus 7, 10 to the power minus 3, is 10 to the power minus 10. Times 2.5, 10 to the power minus 2, minus k hat, divided by DB1 is point zero eight eight ten to the power minus six Tesla. Now if we want to do the same to the second segment For the second segment for dv2, again it is mu naught i2 divided by 4 pi dl2 cross r2 vector divided by r cubed, r2 cubed. Now we know that dl2 minus i hat r2 is also 7.6 minus 2 i hat this one is plus 2.5 to the power minus 2 j hat. R2 is 8 centimeters. And I2 is 24 ampere. So if we put everything together, then dv2 is 4 pi 10 to the power minus 7 divided by 4 pi times 24 times dl2, which is 1.5, this is millimeter. And 
that's minus i hat. This would be cross. I'll put them here, which is 7.6 power minus 2. I hat plus 2.5 power minus 2 j hat divided by 8 centimeter cubed. Now, if you calculate dB2, dB2 here is going to be greater because the current is, is greater. But if you do the cross product, you have I hat cross I hat. This is going to result into a zero. Then minus I hat cross J hat is going to give you minus k hat. So if you do the calculation, then the answer to this is going to be 0.176, 10 to the power minus 6. And it's also pointing in the minus k hat Tesla and the magnetic field, the total magnetic field dB net will be the summation of dB1 plus dB2 dB net is going to be 0.264 10 to the power minus 6 Tesla. So this is the net magnetic field due to those two little segments of only 1.5 millimeter of the wire. Due to this segment, this is the magnetic field that I am I'm getting. Now the second part is the two wires. In this case, if you are to calculate the magnetic field due to the two wires for the case B, For the second one, then you should be using the the wire as here we're assuming that we don't know the length of the wire. So in this case, we will be using the model the, for the infinite wire. For the infinite wire, I know that the magnetic field equals to nu naught i divided by 2 pi, 2 pi r. So in this case, B1 due to the upper wire equals to 4 pi 10 to the power minus 7 times 12, again this is n hat, times 12 divided by 2 pi, r is the distance which is 2.5 centimeters in this case, we'll keep this one now, n hat, and we will find it based on the right hand rule, so we have b1, equals 2, pi is going to cancel, 2, so I have here 2 times the 12, 24, 10 to the power minus 5,
divided by 2.5 and hat. So B1 is 9.6, 10 to the power minus 5 Tesla. And the direction based on the right-hand rule, if you look at the, the thumb to the right, then the magnetic field will be pointing into the page in this case, and into the page means that the magnetic field is minus k hat. So this is B1. B2 is 4 pi 10 to the power minus 7 times 24 divided by 2 pi, same distance. And in this case, B2 is pi with the pi with cancel to. So we have here 19.2, 10 to the power minus five. Now, if you look at the current, the right hand rule, the thumb going to the left, then the magnetic field will be pointing into the page, which is minus k hat as well, Tesla. So this is the magnetic field due to the current and wire one, which is considered to be an infinite uh, wire model for both of them since the length was not given to me. So I was assuming that I'm using an infinite. So now net here be net as both of them are in the same direction. So if you add them, you will get B net to be 28.8, 10 to the power minus five. Again, this is minus K hat Tesla. The last part C, the magnetic field due to the portion only that is to the left of point P and due to the symmetry, this is gonna be half of the magnetic field that I have calculated for part B. And in this case, B net bar as B net divided by two. B net bar would be 14.4, 10 to the power minus five minus K hat. Now, we have seen how is the magnetic field is behaving. If I have a, if I have a wire based on the right hand rule, we have seen that the magnetic field is creating or going into circles around the wire. And that's why when we use the right hand rule, we use the fingers that are curling our, as the direction of the magnetic field and the thumb was pointing to the current. So knowing the current direction, I could find the direction of the magnetic field that is circulating around this wire, or knowing the direction of the magnetic field, how the magnetic field is circulating around the wire, I managed to find the direction of the current. Now what happens if I bend now this wire and make it as a, as a loop this way, in this case, the direction of the, the, now the current is going into the circular path. In this case, I will be using my fingers to point to the direction of the current that is circulating in this loop. And in this case, the thumb will be pointing to the direction of the magnetic field. So in this case, if I have the current that is going into a loop, I will use the fingers for the direction of the current and the thumb for the direction of the magnetic field. If I have the current going in a straight line, then I will use the thumb for the, for the current and I will use the 
the curl, the fingers that can curl to define the direction of the magnetic field. In both cases, I can use the right hand rule. One of them defines the component that is curling. The other one is the, the straight component. So this can be applied on the magnetic field going into circles around the wire. We'll be using the fingers for the magnetic field and the thumb for the current. Or if the current is making a loop, then I will be using the fingers for the direction of the current and the thumb will be pointing to the direction of the magnetic field. So as we can as we can see here, now the fingers are defining the direction of the current and the thumb is the direction of the magnetic field. Look at this case, look at the magnetic field, how it's magnetic field. Current is circulating. As you can see here, this is the direction of the current. And the magnetic field based on the right hand rule, taking the fingers in the direction of the current, I can find the direction of the magnetic field which is going to the right. So if I am to look here at, in general, how is the magnetic field pointing, if I'm uh, in specific, if I am interested in the component right at, on the axis that goes into the middle of this loop, you can see that the direction of the magnetic field point using the right hand rule is going from the left to the right. Now, if we look here at the small segment of this loop, only a small segment of this loop, you can see that the magnetic field is going into circles around this wire. So I can here assume that the right hand rule, the fingers are for the magnetic field and the direction of the current is defined by the, by the thumb. So it depends where I'm looking. I can use the right hand rule. Once fingers for the current, once fingers for the magnetic field, there is no problem at all. Now it's very interesting to look at how is the magnetic field is behaving again based on what we have seen earlier and looking at uh, that the magnetic field is always going into closed circles as we have discussed at the beginning of the magnetic field introduction. Now, if you take this loop, you can see based on the right hand rule, if I am all, only interested in, in, for example, this small section of this wire that is part of the loop and knowing the direction of the current, current is going into this direction Right. If I use the current as the thumb, then I can easily see that the magnetic field inside the loop is pointing out of the page. Outside the loop is pointing into the page. And this, this was expected, if you recall, when we said that if I have a wire and this wire has, magnet, has a current going through, if I have a wire and I have a current going through this wire. Based on the right hand rule, I can see that on the right side of this wire, the magnetic field is entering into the page on the left side of this wire. And this is based on the right hand rule. I can see that the magnetic field is pointing out of the page. So here, the same is happening for this loop, ex except this is a closed path for the for the current, physic physically, it looks to me as a closed path. So when the current is a flowing in one direction, definitely based on the right hand rule, the region inside the loop will have the magnetic field pointing out of the page. The region outside the loop will have the magnetic field pointing into the page. Try to apply the right hand rule on this little segment that has this current, and you will see that the right hand rule is valid. Now, if I am to look at the general behavior of the magnetic field, I can apply the right hand rule such that the fingers are the direction of the current that is going into a circular path, then the thumb will be pointing 
to the direction of the magnetic field. Now, in this question, we need to find where is the north magnetic pole of this current loop. Now, if you were, what we're seeing here is a loop that has been cut. We're on just to, we should just, just to allow us to look at the current, the direction of the current. So if I look now at this half of the loop and I see that there is an X here, which means the current is entering from this point and a dot here, which means that the current is leaving from that point. In this case, using the right hand rule, take the current, take, take the fingers as the ones that are curling in this loop. I can see that the magnetic field is pointing in this direction. So this is the direction of the magnetic field and also the direction of the magnetic dipole moment, if you recall. So in this case, which point has the strongest magnetic field and which point is the north point? This point that has the magnetic field pointing toward is our north port point and this point is the south point. So the answer is, is D. So this is the magnetic field for this loop. And uh, as we said that this is the north direction, this is the south direction. And the magnetic field is always going into circles around the current, as you can see here. So if I am to look at how is the magnetic field is behaving right here, closer to the wire, I can see that there go that it is going into circles such that the right hand rule is also uh, applied here. And I see the current entering, which means that the magnetic field will be pointing in this direction. Notice that the magnetic field inside the loop is at this location the direction at this location here, tangential to this circular path, magnetic field is going this way. Now outside the magnetic field is tangential and along this line, tangential and going this way. Magnetic dipole moment is also going in this direction and also defined by the right hand rule. Now, if we want to derive the magnetic field for the loop, we're not gonna derive it. We I will only point it out to you. And if you're interested to derive it, you can go ahead and derive it using the same approach that we have talked about, magnetic field, dB equals two, mu naught I divided by four pi, DL cross, I'll put the vector right away, divided by R cubed. So in this case, you need to define your differential element vector here. And this differential element vector here, as we have seen earlier, is given by the radius here. The radius R D theta. Here we have theta hat because this is a vector. That's a vector, so we have a theta hat. R vector is defined as, so if we take this instead of R, we make it as, as A, we have it here as A, so A. A, then R would be A. The vector R is the summation of those vectors. Vector number one plus vector number number two. So vector number two is Z K hat. Vector number one is 
is a minus rho hat, if you recall. So the R vector here is a minus rho hat plus z k hat and r vector r magnitude as a squared plus z squared so if you put everything together and now take the dot take the cross product between theta hat and rho hat and k hat you will also end up with uh, two components one of them due to the symmetry will cancel and you will end up only with the component along the along the z hat so here this component this db will be projected into two components one of them here and the other one along the row and the other one is around the the k this one due to the symmetry when you integrate from again the integration theta goes from zero to two pi when you integrate you will find that this component is going to cancel due to the symmetry and you will end up only with the with the k component try try doing it on your own you will end up with this expression so this is the magnetic field due to a loop at a point elevated point from the center of the loop this point is z so you will find that this magnetic field due to the loop is a function of the radius a and also of the point how far the point of interest from the center of the loop so here this magnetic field is only giving me the magnetic field along the axis at the center of the loop so it is mu naught i divided by 2 a squared over a squared plus z squared to the power 3 over 2 here in our case it is k hat because the current is going as you can see based on the right hand rule entering from here leaving from here so the direction of the magnetic field is along the z axis in general it's an n hat we find it based on the right hand rule so if i am now to look at the magnetic field right at the center of the circle which means giving this z zero if i give this z zero and i'm only looking right here at the center of the of the loop in this case z would be zero substitute z here with zero you will end up now with this expression for the magnetic field this is right at the center of the loop mu naught i over 2a and again in this case because the current is entering from here leaving from there based on the right hand rule it is along the positive z axis now the last slide here is a question that i would like you to try it on your own and we will discuss it later on during our our live session